this is a Buccaneer schooner, just going to take you around the van and show you how it operates. Front of the van you've got jockey wheel, hitch and handbrake, we'll demonstrate these to you in person here on site. In the front locker you've got your gas bottle tie down, uh, we put a gas bottle on just to demonstrate everything's working, so if you want to turn the gas bottle on when you arrive there's an on off valve on top, so you can try everything is operating on gas. Next to the gas bottle you'll see this white valve, now what this white valve does is you can actually turn this valve round and it has an arrow on the side of it pointing towards the gas bottle the gas system is going to operate from. So you put it to the side where you want it to operate from, turn on your gas supply and then you'll be able to ignite everything up inside the van as you normally would. Carry a maximum of two six kilogram propane gas bottles on the van at any point. Coming down the side of the van, you've got your Audi heating and hot water flue, very simply there to allow the heating system to breathe. Works very much the same as the flue on the side of a house. You've got your um, automatic legs on this particular van, which will demonstrate why you're here on site also. On the side of the van, you've got your water pump connection, so you pull out the connection and push it into place down the side here, and lock it in place with the cap. The pickup pipe drops down inside the water at the side of the van, and it needs to be fully submerged in water prior to turning the water pump on. You can have a shower connection on the outside of this van, should you wish to. Um, so you can have a dog shower, what they, or what they call a dog shower, so you can have water coming out to the outside of the van for washing your feet off, for instance, when you've been to the beach. We've left a battery on here just to demonstrate everything is working as it should. Now we do recommend you have a battery on this particular caravan at all times for the self-leveling system. And you've got a mains power lead coming in from the power on site. You've then got a storage locker at the side of the van. Wheel nuts, we'll talk wheel nuts while you're here on site since they've been tightened correctly. And then coming down the side of the van a bit further, you've got your two grey waste pipes coming out the side of the van. And they are very simply there to allow the wastewater that goes in the front of the caravan to come back out the side of the van just here. In this cassette at the back, or in this locker at the back, you'll see your toilet waste set, which you pull up the orange handle and release the cassette. The orange neck here turns out 90 degrees, so you can tip the waste away. Grey cap is a measure for your blue fluid. And on the back of the cassette, you've got an orange pressure relief button, so when you're tipping the waste away, it doesn't spit and splatter back at you. In this cassette, you'll need to put one litre of water and a cap full of the blue fluid prior to use. On the back of the van again, you'll see the two wind down legs to see that it's just, uh, when it's all down on site, when they're all on site, you'll see it's all stabilised. You've then got your storage locker from underneath the bed at the rear. Your two fridge vents, the two fridge vents are very simply there to allow the hot air at the back of the fridge unit to take some cool air in. Now in the high temperatures we're, we're experiencing at the moment, the fridge won't be as efficient um, as what it would normally be. So it may not cool down as quickly and it may not get to the same amount of coldness temperature wise when you are using it. You've then got your storage locker for underneath the front seating area with a three pin socket just inside there and you can run a bleed out through the side here. And then you've got your storage locker, uh, gap bucket, your gas bucket at the front. Going on to the inside of the caravan now. To so come into the caravan, you've got your power switches here. You need to, it'll be the power switch just here for the main power to the caravan. And you've got light switches either side. Some of these light switches are for the outside of the van. Above that, you've got your Audi heating and hot water control panel, which I'll demonstrate to you a little bit later in the video. You've then got your water pump switches, which I'll come back to as well shortly. You've then got your voltmeter for your battery on board the caravan and the level of the onboard water tank at the back of the caravan. So that is your water storage tank on that particular panel. However, you do have a hot water tank down in the front here. You do not have to fill the onboard water storage tank. You can just fill it directly to the hot water system and I'll show you how to do that in a moment as well. So to fill the water system, we're gonna open all the taps up on the hot side of the water system, as you can see here. We're then gonna come underneath the seat on the front right hand side here and we're going to make sure this yellow valve is flat with the floor as it is at the moment that valve is upright and towards the bottom of the seat it will drain all the water out of the system onto the floor underneath the caravan so it needs to be flat with the floor prior to turning the water pumper on once you've got that yellow valve flat with the floor you can come over to your control panel just by the door here and you're going to need to turn your water pump switch as you can see it will start drawing water into the caravan but when you initially fill the system on board the caravan, if you want to fill the hot water tank, you're going to need to put this switch to external. So it draws water from the aqua on the outside of the caravan. And if you want to fill the internal supply at the back of the caravan, you need to put it on the internal at the top here. So when you uh, fill the water system up, there's two ways of filling it, like I said. Now, if you want to fill the onboard tank at the back, you still need to fill it by the same point on the outside. And as you can see, there is a little bit of water in there at the moment when that is completely full. 
the pump will automatically turn off. You do need to have all the taps open. You do still need to bleed the water system and get all the air out of the system as we're doing now. But once you have water running out of every tap continuously, you can shut all of the taps back off. At that point, once the water system is completely full, you can actually come over to your heating and hot water control panel. So on this control panel here, just inside the door, the silver one, it'll allow you to go through some different options. So you've got a power button here, bottom left hand side, power on and off. You've then got the menu option. Just here. At the top, you've got your room temperature. So you've got minus, which for some reason it's decided to turn itself on. So you've got minus or plus to set the room temperature on these top two here. I'm just going to turn the heating off. So you've got minus or plus to set your room temperature. Below that, you've got your hot water. So you've got your hot water on this one. So hot water off when this is completely empty. Hot water on when this bar is halfway up and hot water boost when you're showering, when this bar is completely full. Below that, you have the amount of power coming into the caravan from the caravan site you're on. So you've got either one, two, or three kilowatts, depending on what caravan site you're on. If you're not sure what to set this to, I do advise you ask your site office when you arrive on your holiday, and they'll be able to walk you through what setting to set this up to. Obviously, the more kilowatts that are coming into the van, the higher or the more efficient the heating and hot water system is going to be. On the bottom left hand side you have your option to run gas and all you need to do for that is make sure the gas bottle is turned on. Hit the gas option and it will self ignite on gas. If it fails to ignite it will come up with gas failure at the bottom of the screen with two exclamation marks on either side. To turn the gas off you put the button back to blue here. Right hand side you've got your advanced options for the heating and hot water. Now for these, we do advise that you read the manual fully before you try to operate these. If you don't try, if you don't read the manual fully, you could potentially turn off the systems in the back of this control panel. So please just make sure you do read the manual if you're gonna go into the advanced settings for setting programs for heating and hot water, timers, etc. So that is your heating and hot water. Oh, one thing I did forget to say was, is you need to make sure you turn this control panel off prior to um, turning off the main power down below. The microwave in this caravan is an eco microwave, so you need to hit the eco button here and the microwave will come on. After a short while, it will turn itself back off. Obviously, the microwave will only work on 240 mains, the same as the electric ring on the back of the hob. The rest of the hob works on gas and so does the grill and oven. You have a light here or igniter on the left hand side and a light for your oven on the right hand side. Next thing we're going to come to is the fridge. So to turn the fridge on, press the power button. At the moment, it's connected on mains power, so the fridge is running on mains, and you can control the temperature of the fridge on this button on the right-hand side here. If you want to run the fridge on gas, you can select the gas option just here, and the fridge will self-ignite on gas. If it fails to ignite on gas, what it's going to do is it's going to flash the red warning triangle on this right-hand side here, and it will also start flashing the flame symbol here. If it does do this and it hasn't ignited on the first time of trying, hit the tri warning triangle, press and hold, and it will reset the igniter for the uh, fridge. Again, on gas, you can control the temperature on this button on the right-hand side. When you're travelling down the road, you also have the option to run 12-volt mode. Now, if your car hasn't got the right connection on it, or you haven't got the right uh, type of pin, uh, where you've got a seven pin and it's a 13 pin on the caravan for instance it will not operate the fridge as a call box as you're traveling you need to make sure you've got the right connection there you don't need to have the control panel turned on inside the door for this to work but you turn the come inside turn the fridge on and hit the, the call box mode or the 12 volt mode what it essentially does is turn the fridge into a call box while you are traveling now one thing the workshop team always says if you're traveling down the road and you want it to get cold quicker then they do advise you put some ice blocks in there to help the temperature of the fridge or the cool box at that point so that is the fridge turn the fridge off you'll press and hold the power button and it will isolate the power to it coming into the back of the caravan now you have your toilet system which is very simple to use the toilet has an electric flush so you press the button here it will flush the toilet the toilet has an indicator light here that illuminates red when the toilet waste cassette is completely full the toilet seat itself actually turns for your convenience, as you can see. However, when you're removing the toilet waste cassette from underneath the caravan, it does need to be in this straight on position. Below the toilet, you'll actually find your grey waste handle. So to allow the waste into the cassette and the van, you need to push it across to the far side here. 
and when you're not using the toilet you need to have it in the central position you do also need to make sure this grey flap is back in the central position when you are removing the toilet waste cassette from underneath the caravan coming down to the front of the caravan now I'm just going to show you the trip switches and that will be the last part of the video so in this cabinet on, on underneath the front seat in the area on the right hand side you'll see that you've got your 240 trip switches and at the bottom you've got your 12 volt fuses 12 volt fuses are individually marked up what each is for then at the top of that panel you'll see that they are marked for what size fuse should be in each connection at the top here you have your 240 trip switches now a little tip for you is if you arrive on site and you're not sure if you've got mains power coming to the caravan hit the test switch inside this blue switch drops down just here drops down here then that means you have mains power coming to the van from the site you're on if it stays in the upright position it means you have no mains power coming into the caravan from the site and that is the buccaneer schooner if you have any further questions on the caravan please don't hesitate to give us a call here at the caravan company and we'll be more than happy to help we appreciate your business and we look forward to seeing you here on site soon thanks again bye bye